is go to your settings on your Wi-Fi, turn the bike's ignition on and you will see the CAN switch network appear. Select CAN switch as your Wi-Fi network. It may ask you for a password. If it does, the password is the number following the word CAN switch. That is the default password. In this example, it will be 0008D8D2. Once you've connected to the CAN switch network, you can go out of the settings again and then go to your phone uh, to your phone's browser and what you do is you type in can switch as the address that you want to browse to just as simple as that can switch and say go and there we go it loads the can switch web page now this web page is being served from the can switch on your motorcycle important things to note there is the version numbers at the top it says can switch wi-fi version 1.6 firmware version 6. okay and these are the things you can do with the can switch now for starters if you want to change the wi-fi password tap on the configure wi-fi option and the password will appear there in this case my example password is already set to p word one two three you can type in a new password over there and the delay over here that is adjustable sets how long the Wi-Fi will be accessible. Once you turn the ignition on, in this example the Wi-Fi will only be available for 5 minutes and after that it will turn off again. If you are connected to the Wi-Fi it will stay connected, it won't turn off, but if you have not connected after 5 minutes it will turn off. If you set this to zero it means it will not turn off at all. So uh, a normal setting here would be 5 minutes, that's perfect. If I do release new firmware, you simply go into this Wi-Fi settings and tap update the Wi-Fi firmware to go and load the new firmware. But that we'll discuss in a later video. Right, once you've done the installation in your bike, you can actually test all the outputs as well. You can select to test the outputs, the inputs or the CAN bus. Let's go testing the outputs and it will show you one line for each output in the color representing the output's wire. You can see the left spotlight is brown, the right one is orange, etc, etc, etc. You can tap on an individual item and that output is then turned on so your left spotlight should now be on. If you tap on the right one, the right spotlight should be on. Tap on the green one, your brake light should be on if you did install that and then the ignition output and then the last output, the pink one or purple one rather is not used in the basic configuration. You go back, you can also use this to adjust the rules and on the rules you it's all broken down into the basic settings for example the spotlights, if you go into the spotlights you can now select what aspect of the spotlights do you want to adjust. Let's say you want to adjust the brightness your options there is day, night and bright. The day is when the sensor on your motorbike's instrument panel says it's daylight. It will set your spotlights to 70% brightness. And you can adjust that to whatever value you want. I find 70% to be uh, a nice value. At night, I leave it on 20% not, so as not to blind oncoming traffic. So when the sensor says it's night, the spotlights automatically go down to 20%. And brights is basically when you activate your high beam. Now for that, obviously, you want to stick that to 100%. You've got the option of adjusting the brightness with the navigation wheel. I suggest if you do have a navigator connected to disable this. Otherwise, whenever you operate the navigator, your spotlights will go dim and bright. And the bottom option, dimmed until engine starts, keeps the lights dim until you actually crank the engine and start it so it doesn't consume too much battery power. If you've made any changes you need to just tap on the apply button to store those changes back onto the CAN switch. If we go back we can also select the indicator mode and this selects how the spotlights works with the indicators. You can select to flash the relevant side spot or dim the spot dim both spots or turn off the relevant spot or turn both of them off and of course you can also select to do nothing when you when you turn the indicators on i find it quite helpful in my bike on my bike i leave it to flash the relevant side spot so the spotlight just flashes with 
the indicators themselves. The hazards option is again, once you operate the hazards on your bike, what do you want the spotlights to do? I like to leave mine set to flash opposite to hazards. It gives you a nice visibility if you do have an emergency situation and it is visible from very far away. Just store that again. Um, the rapid flashing option, you can set when you tap your brights twice that it, the spotlights will give five rapid flashes or while you use the horn. This is nice to attract attention to your motorcycle when you do use the horn to warn a pedestrian or whatever the case may be. And then on off control to turn the actual spotlights off, I leave mine set so when the auxiliary lights on my GSA switch on, then my spotlights switch off, otherwise I look like a plane coming into land. The auxiliary light option obviously only applies to the GSA, or if you did fit the OEM auxiliary lights on the normal GS, that will also apply. If you turn the keel switch off, the lights turn off and toggled when cancelled is held means the indicator cancel button, if you hold it for about a second, your lights turn off. If you do it again, the lights turn back on. Okay, that is it for the spotlights. And then you've got the brake light option as well. There you can set at above which speed the brake lights should flash fast when you activate the brakes. So in this example, while I'm going above 80 kilometers an hour and I brake, my rear light will flash at 5 hertz, very similar to the BMW OEM dynamic brake light. If I go below 80 but above 25, it will flash at 2 hertz, and below 25 it will just be on like a brake light. When I'm stationary, however, it will flash very slowly as per the top checkbox. Use as a fog light. If you turn your daylight running light off and you tell the motorcycle to keep the headlight on, it will then keep the brake light on as well, typically in misty conditions that will be used. And then flash briefly on gear down. If it detects that you are gearing down and you are not activating your brakes at the same time, if this option is enabled, your rear light will flash briefly, just to warn people behind you that you are decelerating. And you've also got the options where the hazards, should it flash with uh, the hazards or opposite to them, or do nothing at all. The ignition output, over here you can set how long the ignition output remains active if you have a USB charger or anything connected. The maximum time for this is 60 seconds. That is because after 60 seconds the CAN switch turns off completely. It draws absolutely no current from your battery. And after that, it cannot control any outputs anymore either. And uh, that is so it cannot drain your motorcycle's battery. And then the gate remote output, if enabled, if you tap the ABS button quickly, then that output is pulsed for one second. So you can use it to activate your automatic garage door or gate opener. There we go. That is it and allows you to set the rules while standing next to your bike. Have fun. Enjoy.